Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, what we're going to do is cover uh, Next.js. So Next.js is a React framework. Now React itself is a JavaScript library that is built on top of vanilla JavaScript. So what Next.js is it takes this React framework and builds on top of it. And so we get features that we don't usually get in React when we utilize Next. Now, because Next is built on top of React, we need to know React to, uh, well, learn uh, Next. So knowing a basic knowledge of React is a prerequisite to this crash course, because I'm not going to be teaching you guys things like props and components, etc. cetera. Uh, but you only need a real basic amount. You don't need to be a React pro. So let's just get into exactly what we're going to be building with next. So we're going to be building a very simple application. So over here, if I were to zoom in, you can see we're building an application called cat world. And what it does, what this application is, is a cat adoption website. So over here, you can see that you're able to start looking for your cat. So if you click this button, you go to the page where you start looking for your cats. And then you can start looking at all of the different cats and you can see over here their uh, contact information in order to adopt them as well as the email. Now what you can do is you can just very simply uh, click on a cat that you like. So, so I'm interested in this cat. You can click on this cat. You can see over here uh, the name of the cat and I don't know, like a relatively long description. Now this is an, an aesthetically nice application to be quite honest, but that's really not the point. The point is to focus in on next. And um, once you understand the next knowledge, you can make the application very pretty. Now this is a, a relatively large application. You're going to learn a lot of next concepts. So over here, we also have this nav bar that takes us back to this page. So you can see that this is a multi page application. So you can see that and the data that we have here are they're not static data. They're actually going to be um, served to us by a server. Now, Next.js actually allows us to configure a server inside of our next application. And so we're going to be utilizing that. So that's pretty much the application. And let's just get right into it. Let's now learn how to create a Next.js application inside of our computer. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to nextjs.org. I'm going to click on the docs. And once you get to the docs, it redirects you to the getting started page. Now over here, you can see some of the system requirements. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So you can see that the system requirement is you need to have node installed on your machine and it has to be greater. The version has to be greater than 12.2, 2.0. And you know, this all works with Mac, Windows and Linux. So that's really all you need. All you need to have is node on your machine. Now, in order to install a next project inside of your application, you very simply have to open up your terminal and run this command npx create next app at latest. Now, if you want to utilize TypeScript with this, you can also do the dash dash TypeScript. We're not going to be doing this for our application. So let's go over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy this command. So let's copy this command. And let's go to our terminal. So I'm going to open up my terminal. I'm going to clear everything. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Let's just clear this again, bigger, bigger, bigger. All right. And so now in here, what we're going to do is let me just go a few levels up. Seems like I cleared it a little bit too much. Let's go here, here. Maybe zoom in once more. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to execute npx create a next app at latest to get the latest version. And then what we're going to do is we are going to give this next JS app a name. Let's just call it cats app because we're, we're creating a cat application. So let's just uh, enter this. And now what it's doing is it's going to install the next JS application and it's going to do it inside of the desktop directory. Now for me, it's going to do it inside of desktop because 
I'm inside of my desktop directory, but whatever directory that you're in is going to create that in there. So if you want to, if you want to create it in a specific directory, just do a CD and then move into that directory. So that application is done. Awesome. Uh, so it's done downloading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an instance of VS code. So let's go here. Let's open up a new instance of VS code. I'm going to go to open. I'm going to go to my desktop and I am going to go to cat's app. So let's go here, open that. So let's just zoom in once more. So you can see that we already have a lot of files and folders. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of boilerplate that is already here. We have this pages directory. We have this styles directory. We have this public directory. We have a bunch of other things. Now, what I want to do is I want to start my application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the package.json and inside of the package.json, we're going to run this. So we're going to execute npm run dev. And what this is going to do is execute next dev, which is going to run our application in development. So in localhost 3000. So in order to do this for me, what I actually need to do is close down my other application that I have running. Uh, so that is, do I still have that running? Let's see. I do still have it running. I'm just not really sure where it is. So I'm gonna have to find that real quick and close it down. I think it's this one. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna just close the terminals. So close this, close this. You don't have to do this step, of course. And now if I were to refresh, now we don't have anything. Okay, awesome. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my terminal here, my integrated terminal, and I'm gonna run npx run dev, or not npx, sorry, npm run dev. So npm run dev. And now if we go to localhost 3000, we should see this application right over here. And this is the default next application. Awesome. In this section of the course, what we're going to do is build all of the major components inside of our cats app application. So we're going to build the jumbotron component, we're going to build the actual pet card component. And we're also going to build the nav component. And we're also going to style these components and you might think, okay, well, whatever, but Next.js actually has a different way that we can style our application. Now, right now, building the components is actually very, very similar to how you would build components in React. There's nothing really different about it. So what I like to do is I like to just take a components directory. And then in here, I like to create a whatever that component is. So I create a directory for that. And then I create a file for that as well. So over here, we have a nav directory. And then in here, we have our nav.js file. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute RFC. And what this is going to do is create a function based component for me. In order to get this, you need to have this extension installed inside of VS code. So go ahead and install that. And if you don't want it, you can just write this out. So in here, we're going to create our nav components. However, I don't want to just create the nav component, I want to go ahead and uh, get it from a library. So what library am I going to be utilizing? Well, I'm going to be utilizing bootstrap for this. So let's actually go over here. And we're gonna go all the way to bootstrap. And we're gonna go click on bootstrap here. And we're gonna go to their docs. And we're just very simply going to go to their components here, we're going to click on the nav, so nav bar. And I just want a nav bar that looks like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this over here. And I'm going to paste that in there. So that I don't have to worry about, you know, all the styling myself. So let's just go ahead and paste this. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to go into my pages directory. So inside of my pages directory, we have this index.js file. And what this index.js file represents is the 
page the component that we're going to render when we are in the root of our application. So right now, if I were to go to our application, you can see this right over here. And this, this all this is stored right in here inside of the index.js file. So what we can do actually is get rid of all of the things inside of the div. So let's go ahead here, let's get rid of all this stuff. So let's go here, let's get rid of all that. And then right in here, we can create a main element. So let's go here, create a main element, and we can just say hello. And now you can see that we have hello over here. Now we'll talk about this a little bit later. Don't worry about it. But for now, let's just create our component. So in here, what I want to do is I want to render this nav component. So let's go ahead and save it. And then in here, I'm going to say nav and auto import that in. So as you can see, it got auto imported. Let's get rid of this because we don't need that. We're going to save that. And you can see we have our nav component. However, the bootstrap styles are not being applied. So what we can do is actually go to the next documentation and let's just zoom out a little bit. And if we go over here to the built in CSS, it actually tells us how we can apply bootstrap into our application. So if we want to get styles from the node modules, let me zoom back in. What we need to do is install that library, which is bootstrap and then import that inside of the pages slash underscore app JS file. So first of all, let's go ahead and install bootstrap. So we're going to go here, we're going to do an npm install bootstrap. So once that installs, what we can do is we can actually import this inside of the underscore app .js file. And what this file is, is the root of our application. So anything we want to have access to throughout our whole application, we're going to uh, import it inside of this file. And as you can see here, by default, next has these global CSS uh, um, styles that it imported inside of here. So what we're going to also do is import the bootstrap styles because we remember we installed it. So we're going to go ahead and save that. Now, once we go to our next JS application, you can see that we have these wonderful bootstrap styles. So you can see that they're actually uh, applied at this point. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to go to the global styles. So in order to do that, what we need to do is go to the styles directory, go to global. And in here, what I want to do is I want to make everything margin zero padding zero. And I want to get rid of everything else right over here. So if we were to refresh, we should uh, see those changes. Awesome. Okay, so this is terrific. So now we have our nav bar. That's awesome. So now what we need is the jumbotron. So let's go back to our components directory. And then in here, let's create a jumbotron and then jumbotron, jumbotron.js. So what this does is it creates the directory as well as the file, as you can see here. Now in here, let's do an RFC and let's go back to bootstrap here. And then right over here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to bootstrap and then we want to find the jumbotron, of course. So Let's go over here. We want the jumbotron. Where is that? Um, let's see. I can't really seem to find it here. So maybe we can just search for it. So jumbotron. Okay. Let's, I think I can find it if I go to Google and I say bootstrap jumbotron. So if you were to click here, you can see that we get this jumbotron. So let's figure out the code for this. So I want this fluid jumbotron. So what we can very simply do is just copy this. Let's copy that. And in here, we're just going to paste that in. So we're just going to paste that fluid jumbotron in. And that's really all we need for this. So now what we can very simply do is go back to our index.js page inside of the pages directory. 
And then in here, we can also apply the Jumbotron. So we can auto import that in. And so now if you were to go here, you can see that we have our nav bar and we also have our Jumbotron. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to the Jumbotron and I'm also gonna give it a margin top of five. So let's go here. And now you have a little bit of a margin. So in here we can call it, um, we can call this application cats world. So you can call it cats world. And in here you can say, find your new best friend, best friend today. Adopt a wonderful cat. So that's pretty much all that we want inside of here. The last thing that we need is a button. And so let's actually also get this from uh, Bootstrap. So let's go here. Let's click on buttons. And I want this button, let's say this primary button. So let's go over to our uh, Jumbotron. And let's see here. Start looking. So start looking or start not starting looking, start looking. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and you can see here that we need some space. And there we go. So now we have this wonderful home page application. So we have our nav bar. We also have our jumbotron. So this isn't very, um, this isn't very, uh, you know, nexty. This is, this is pretty much simple old react. Uh, but now we're actually going to look at some of the advantages that we get with next. So let's actually do that inside of the next section. In this section of the application, what I want to do is add routing to my application. So specifically what I mean is I want to be able to have multiple pages within my next app. So if we were to go here to our next app currently, what I want to do is I want to be able to click on start looking and what it should do is redirect us from localhost 3000 to localhost 3000 slash cats. And this should show us all of the cats components. So let's actually go ahead and learn how we can do that. Now, if we were to just go to localhost 3000 slash cats, we would get redirected to this 404 page saying that the page is not found, which makes sense because we didn't create that page. Now, in order to create that page, all we have to do is move into the pages directory. So this directory is a magical directory. Whatever file we put in there is going to be a page in our application. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a cats page. So all we have to do is in here say cats dot js and then in here just create a function based component say cats for instance and there we go we're pretty much done and let's just save that and so let me just close this and now if you were to go to cats you can see that we don't get that uh, page anymore uh, that 404 page we can actually see our cats page so that's really all we have to do to create a page in our app we have to create a file that has the same uh, 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 name as the path that we want. So we want slash cats, so we call this cats.js. Now another way of doing it, and we're gonna do it this way, is to create a folder called cats. So we're gonna create a folder.cats, and then in here we're gonna create an index.js file. And so what this index.js file is going to do is gonna look at the parent directory, it's gonna see that it's cats, and then it's gonna be like, oh, okay, well, this is gonna be the cats page. So let's actually delete that cats.js file. And then in here, we can do RFC, and we can also say cats or cat. And now if we were to refresh, you can see that we have our app. Again, you can see cat. All right, so this is the way that we're gonna do it. And the reason why we're gonna do it is it allows us to nest uh, routes. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. So in here, what we want to do is we want to have our cats components, of course, our cat card components, display them. And we also want, um, we also want to show the nav bar. So the first thing is let's go ahead and import the nav bar. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna say nav, and that should auto import the nav bar. Let's just close it off. And we should see our nav bar. And nav bar isn't defined. Let's do nav, auto import, there we go. 
So now we have our wonderful nav bar. Okay, cool. Now you can see that the nav bar here stretches the whole thing, whereas inside here, it's not stretching the whole thing. Um, so that just might be because of some styling that we have in here in the home.js. So let's just get rid of all these styling. We'll style our application later and there we go, perfect. So now what we can do is let's go to slash cats. So over here, and now what we want to do is we want to create the cats component. So let's actually just go ahead and do that. And what I mean by the cats component is the cat card component. So let's go over to our components directory. And then in here, we're gonna create cats or not cats, let's call it card and then card.js. And in here, we're going to do EFC to get our functional base component. And now we're going to code out our app. Now we're gonna actually add our own styles to this instead of uh, relying on Bootstrap. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a card.module.css. So this is some magic that happens with next. So we're gonna do card.module.css. And then in here, we're going to add our styles. Now I'm not going to add these styles manually. That would take forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link my GitHub page. We're going to go here and I'll link this exactly in the, in the description below. We're going to go to the cards. We're going to go to the card dot module. And we're just going to steal all of these styles. And actually some of the styles here, we don't even need. For example, we don't need this. I took this out and you don't need that. And so in here we have our styles. So now what we can actually do is import these styles from card.module.css. So we're gonna import these styles from over here. Now typically in a React application, if you wanna get the styles in the app, you would just do something like this. Now in next, you, you could also do something like this in next, but in next it's actually recommended to import these styles and then in here, what we're going to do is actually apply the class names manually. So we're going to say class name is equal to curly braces. And then we're going to say styles. And then we're going to do square brackets. We're going to do quotes and then the name of the style. In this case, the name of the style is card. So we actually don't have to do square bracket quotes for this. So we can just do styles.card. And this is going to create the uh, cards style. Uh, okay, awesome. So that's the very first thing. Now in here, let's also create another div for the image. So let's create a div. We're going to give this a class name. And this is going to have a class of header uh, card header. So we're going to go here. And this time we're going to have to do the square brackets because we can't do something like card and then uh, this header. So slash header, we can't do that. So what we're going to need to do is wrap that in square brackets and then in quotes and then do that. So that would work. And again, the, the, the styles are going to apply here. And so now what we need inside here is the image. So we're going to say the image, we're going to give that a style of, let's give it a class name. Let's copy this. Okay. Let's give it a class name of card image corresponding to this over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create another div. We're also going to give it another class name and this is going to be card content. So this is going to correspond to actually, we're not going to give that card content. That's fine. I guess it doesn't, this one doesn't need any uh, styles. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're just going to add an H3 that has the name of the animal. And then we're going to have a, a P tag that has the phone number of the animal and then another P tag that has the email. Now, how do we get all this information like the image, all these other things? We're just going to get them from the props. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the name of the animal from the props. We're also going to get the phone number to contact the person if you want the animal and the animal, of course, is the cat. Uh, and then we're also going to get the image. And then we're also going to get the ID might as well. So in here, what we can very simply say is name. And then here we can say, um, phone. And then in here we can say email. And then here, what we can do is 
we can say image dot URL because what this is well, what we're going to make this do is give us an object that has the URL as well as the alt. So over here, what we can say is image dot alt. Alt. All right, so that's pretty much our component. And we actually learned how we can style things a little bit differently with next. So now that we have that, what I want to do is actually render this component inside of our cats page. So let's go to our cats page right over here. Uh, where is our cats page? So if we go to pages, we go to cats index.js. In here, I want to render that cats page. So in order to render all of those uh, uh, cats cards, what we need, of course, is the data. So where are we going to get this data from? Now, we could just statically add that inside of our front end, but let's actually utilize some of the API features that Next provides. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually create an endpoint that is going to serve us those cat data. And let's do that in the next section. In this section, what we're going to do is learn about some of the server side capabilities with Next.js. Specifically, we're going to look at how we can actually create endpoints that serve us data. So in order to do this, all we need to do is go to the pages directory. And then in here, you can see that there is already an APIs directory. And in here, we have a hello.js file. And then in here, we have this function that is serving some data. So actually what's happening here is it's going to create an endpoint that is going to be localhost or whatever our domain is, and then slash API, and then slash hello. And then what's happening is it's going to serve this JSON data to us. So then we can actually call this from other pages as well as other components. So we can just make a call to slash API slash hello, and we should be able to get this data. And to prove it to you, let's actually copy this. And let's go here and let's just paste that in. And if I were to increase it, you can see that we are able to serve the data. So in here, what I actually want to do is I want to rename this to cats to get all of the cats data. And what I want to do is I want to return an array of cats. So instead of having it all over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file called, and we're going to create it in the root, not in the pages, in the root. Let's go here. We're going to call it data.js. And again, for this, we're going to go to my uh, GitHub page, and I'll have a link for this in, in the description below. And we're going to go to that data.js file right here. And we're just going to copy all of this cat data. So they're just a bunch of objects that contain information about cats. We're going to go ahead and paste that in there. And then in here, now, of course, we could actually do this with a database and you could connect to a database here if you want to. However, that's just going to be uh, taking the focus away from next. So let's actually just not do that. So in here, what we're going to do is just going to serve that cat's information. And we're going to auto import that in. And so now if I were to go to slash API slash cats, you can see we get a bunch of cat information. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to actually create another endpoint. So another endpoint where we can actually fetch for one specific cat. How do we do that? Well, what we want to do is let me just copy this. So if I want to fetch for one specific cat, we have to figure out, well, what cat do you want to fetch for? Now, what's the best way to uniquely identify a specific a record in our database, which is just a static file? Well, the best way is to pass in the ID. So what I actually want to do is I want to create an endpoint like this. So I want to create an endpoint where we have localhost uh, 3000 slash API slash cats, and then slash the ID of the cat that we want. And then what this should do is just give us this object over here. It shouldn't give us an array of all the cats. It should just give us one object. Now, how do we pull this off? Well, really easy. So in order to do this, what we need to do is inside of the API, we need to create a cats directory. And then in here, instead of using a cats.js, we're going to use an index.js. And remember, this is going to be exactly the same. 
If we have an index.js, what that's going to do is look at the directory above it, and that's exactly what it's going to be called. So in here, let's just copy this, or let's copy all of this, and let's paste that in here, and I'm going to delete the cats directory. And I'll show you exactly why we need to do this. So let's just save this, refresh, and save here, refresh. Oh yeah, and then let's get rid of this. And then, okay, yeah, and we of course have to fix our imports because now we're here, there we go. So we still get our data, awesome. So now again, what do I want to do? I want to do something like slash cat slash whatever that I, cat ID is. So how do I have nested routes inside of our app? Because this right here is the nested route. We're doing slash cats slash ID. Well, in order to do this, what we do is we go inside of this cats directory and we create any other file that is not going to be an index.js file. So for example, we can create a, I don't know, pumpkin, pumpkin.js file. And then in here, what we can do is let's, let's just paste that in here and we're just going to return. Hello, pumpkin. Hello, pumpkin. Really weird. And so what's happening here? Well, this pumpkins.js file is inside of the cats directory. And so what's going to happen here is our path is going to be slash cats slash pumpkin. So slash cats slash pumpkin. And that's exactly why we had to create this cats directory if we wanted these nested routes. So now if I were to do over here slash cat slash pumpkin, and I misspelled pumpkin, let's just copy this and paste it in here, pumpkin. You can see that we get hello pumpkin. All right, cool. So that's exactly how we can have that slash cat slash whatever. Now, of course, what we want to do is we want to make this dynamic because this is going to be the ID of the cat. Now, in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to change the name of this. We're going to change the name to, well, what is this going to be? It's going to be an ID because it's going to be slash cat slash ID. And to specify that it's going to be dynamic, we wrap it with square brackets. So we wrap it with square brackets right over here. So let's paste that in. And now if we were to save this and save that, now if we go to slash pumpkins, this still works. And if you go to slash one, it still works. And if you go to slash whatever, it still works. So you can see here that it's slash cats slash whatever. Uh, it's just a dynamic ID. And so here, what we can actually do is have access to that ID that we passed in. So in order to have access to that ID, what we're going to do is utilize the request. So in um, inside of uh, just a typical REST API, we have the request, we have the response. So now what we can very simply do is get that ID from the request.query. So we can say here, ID is equal to request.query query. And then in here, let's actually take this ID and let's pass it in here dynamically. So now if I did slash cat slash five, you can see here that we have five. Let me zoom in here once more. Five. If I did slash cat slash whatever, we have this. So you can see that this actually is working perfectly fine. So now what we can do is we can utilize this ID to fetch the cat that we want. So we can say here const cat is equal to cats dot find. And what is going on here? You can say cat, and we can say cat dot ID because each cat has an ID is equal to the number version of cat of the ID because this is going to be returned back to us as a string as you can see here. And now what we can do is once we get this cat, we can just return this cat. So now if we refresh, here we should get null because we don't have that cat. Uh, but if we were to do something like two, we get Hector. So now we created uh, a dynamic route. Awesome. And this is actually going to be really important because we're going to do the exact same things, but not with route handlers, but with pages. But the premise of it is going to be exactly the same. 
Now that we created the routes to uh, serve us our data, what we're gonna do is we're going to go to those pages and actually fetch the data. So in order to do this, let's go to our uh, cats directory. We're gonna go to the index. And in here, what we want to do is we want to fetch the data. So we need to make some sort of asynchronous request, some sort of HTTP request to that endpoint that we created in order to get that cats array. So in here, what we're going to do is create a function. So let's go here, we're gonna create a function and this function is gonna be called uh, fetch cats. And of course, this is gonna be asynchronous, so let's mark it with async. And then in here, what we're gonna do is const response is gonna be equal to await. And we're gonna use the built-in fetch method. So we're gonna fetch, and then we're gonna say slash API slash and then cats. And what's nice about this is that we don't have to define, you know, whatever endpoint it is or what the URL is because the URL is going to be exactly the same as uh, the one that we have, which is localhost 3000. So we're going to do slash API slash cats. And then what this should do is give us a response. Now, in order to get the data from the response, what we're going to do is const data and we're going to await this. And we're going to say response dot JSON. So we're going to get our data back by converting the response to JSON. And then what I want to do is I want to set this data inside of our state. So what I can do here is I can create a, um, a cats state. So we're going to say cats set cats. And we're going to say that that's equal to use state. Notice that I auto imported it here. And then this initially is going to be an empty array. Now over here, the data is going to be an array of cats. So what we can do is we can just do very simply set cats. And then we can say data really easy. So what I want to do is I want to uh, call this function as soon as the page renders. So the best thing for this is a use effect. So let's go here, use effect again, notice that it's going to auto import as you can see here. Uh, and then we're going to go here or we're going to add the square bracket so we can uh, fetch this just once. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to very simply call fetch cats. And so once we fetch our cats, what we should be able to do, let's just quickly console.log the data. Let's console.log this data so we can see exactly what we have. So let's go to this inspect, go to the console. We're gonna go to slash cats. So not slash API slash cats. We're actually gonna go to the page itself. And now if I were to zoom into the console, you can see that we get uh, six uh, objects inside of an array all of our cats. So that actually works successfully. So now what we want to do is we want to iterate over our cats array and render a cats card for each one. So let's go over here. So let's go down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over every single cat. So we're going to do cats.map. We're going to say cat. And then for this, we're going to render a component. So let's go here and then we're going to say, we want to render which component? Well, we want to render the card component. So we created this here, the card component. Okay, so let's go ahead and import that in. So let's go here again, notice I auto imported it. And we're going to just close this off. Let me quickly close my door. My cat is making a ruckus. There we go. Sorry about that. My cats, I don't know what my cat is doing. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the props. So remember the card component and let's close this, close that, close this, close this, close this. We got too much things going on here. Let's close everything here. So remember the card component, it takes the props name, phone, email, image, and ID. And so what we're gonna say here is name is equal to cat.name. We're gonna say ID is equal to cat.id. We're gonna say phone is equal to cat.phone. Now we could also pass the whole cat thing itself, but the cat also has things like description that I kind of don't wanna pass in. So we can just do it manually like this. Then we can do the email, which is the cat.email or not cat, yeah, cut that email. 
and then we can say image and then over here we can say that the uh, yeah we can just pass in the cat dot image so over here that's the image and then the last thing that I want to pass in actually no that's pretty much it so now if we actually were to save this and we were to go back here you can see we get some cats let me just zoom out a little bit we get some cats how awesome is that now of course it's not styled properly so let's actually quickly fix that right now so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just give this a um, I'm going to move this nav bar over here. So I'm going to add these uh, fragments. So I'm going to add this fragment. We're going to move this nav bar here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to um, we are going to uh, inside of this div save that inside of this div, we're going to add a class name of container. And this is going to be a bootstrap class that's going to put everything kind of in the center over here. And we're also going to give it a margin top empty of five, just so we can have a little bit of spacing between here. Now, what we also need to do is we need to uh, style this over here to give it display flex. So what we can actually do in order to do this is go to our home dot module dot CSS. Is that what is being used? No, it's not. That's not what's being used. Actually, what we can very simply do here is just create a div, do this, and we're just going to add some inline styles for this just to make it real quick. So we're going to say display flex. And then we're going to say uh, flex wrap. And we're going to say wrap. And I think that should do it. So now we have these guys. So, and let's also give it a justify content, say justify content of space between. Let's see if that makes it a little bit better. Okay. It's not that nice actually. Let's get rid of that justify content. And then inside of each card, Let's go to our styles here and then inside of each card, let's give it a margin right of something. So we're going to say margin right of, let's say one rem. All right. This is looking good. Maybe we can even make it three rems. There we go. Okay. This looks good to me. All right. Awesome. So that is our cards and now we're able to fetch our data. How terrific is that? So now what I want to do is I want to have the ability to click on a card. And once that clicks on the card, it should redirect us to slash cat slash whatever card ID is. And it should hit that um, cat endpoint that's going to give us that one cat and then show us the description of the cat as well. So let's do that in the next section. In this section of the course, what we're going to learn is how we can redirect to different pages inside of our app. So right now what we have is this, of course, and when we click on it, we don't get redirected anywhere. Similarly with the nav itself, when we click on it, we don't get redirected anywhere. We actually have to manually change the route to uh, get to wherever we need. So you can see here, if you click this, nothing works. So let's actually learn exactly how we can actually make these things functional and redirect to different pages in a side of our application. So one thing that we can do is we can go over here and let's actually start with the nav. And what I want to do is once we click on this nav bar right over here, which is a span, what I want to do is I want to redirect this to the home page. Now, in order to do this, we could make this an href, but next actually provides us with a great link element that we can utilize. So if we went here and we did import and we imported link from next slash link, what we can do is we can actually utilize this link element or this link component to redirect our application, redirect ourselves between pages. So in here, what we can do is we can have link and then here we can have link and then in here we can add an href. And then this can be just the slash path. 
And so now, and you can see the styling is a little wonky. We can, you can fix that later, I'm not going to. But now if you were to go to something like slash cats, and I were to click here again, you can see I get redirected. Awesome. So that, that's how we can, that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is, let's actually go to our Jumbotron. So inside of our Jumbotron, what we're gonna do is we want to, of course, go to the slash cats page. Now let's say we wanna actually keep this a button. We don't wanna make this a link. So how are we able to redirect, but by keeping this a button? Because under the hood, what this is going to be is an anchor tag. And so another way we can actually do it is getting something called use router. So we can get this use router hook and we can get that from next slash router. And now in here, what we can do is we can say const router is equal to use router and we can go ahead and invoke it. Now we can actually use this router and inside of an on click handler, so inside of an on click handler, what we can do is we can execute a function that calls router dot push and we invoke it and then we push the path that we want to add inside of our application or we want to actually go to. So we want to go to slash cats. So again, we have an on click, we have a router dot push slash cats. If I were to click on this now, you can see we go over here. And now let's actually do the exact same thing, but for uh, these cards. So over here, let's copy this on click. Let's go to the card component. And then in here, let's have an on click handler. And this is gonna go to slash card slash whatever card ID. So over here, let's add template literals. And then we're gonna say slash dollar sign. And then the ID that we pass in. So now, and of course, what we need to do is import use router. So let's go over here. Let's say const router is equal to use router. And we're gonna invoke this. Notice I auto imported it. And now if we were to click on this cat, you can see we get redirected here. Now, of course, here we actually don't have any page. So how are we going to add this page? Well, we're gonna add the page is the exact same way that we added the API route. So inside of this cats directory, we're gonna have a id.js and the id of course is gonna be wrapped with square brackets. And then in here, we're gonna have a functional based component and we can call this cat here. All right, and now in here, what we want to do of course is to create our application. Well, we want to, um, render our cat information for that specific cat. So in order to do this, the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, make that HTTP request to get that cat info. So let's go here, we're gonna create a function and we're gonna create a function called fetch cat. And this is gonna be async. So we're gonna have this async function called fetch cat. Now, this is this is going to hit the path slash api slash cat slash whatever id this is so inside of the page we need a way to get this dynamic id this one right over here now how do we do that well we do that with use router so over here we're going to say router and we're going to say is equal to use router and now to get the id what we can do is destructure out the id from the router so we can destructure out the id from the router and then dot query so similar to what we had uh, up there from the router dot query we can actually destructure out that id and remember the id is going to be exactly the name that we have right over here and so now what we can very simply do is utilize this id to make our fetch so we're going to say const response is equal to a wait. And let me close this over here. We're going to say const response is equal to a wait fetch. And then we're going to do slash API slash cats and then slash uh, uh, dollar sign uh, uh, curly braces ID. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to say const data is equal to await response.json. 
And then lastly, well, what I want to do is I want to create a state. So let's go over here. Let's say const. Uh, we're going to say const cat. And then set cat is equal to use state. Notice that I auto imported it. Uh, initially, we're going to give it a value of null. And then here, what we're going to do is set cat data. All right. So let's go ahead and now let's create a use effect. So inside of this use effect, I auto imported it. Okay, awesome. I didn't think I did. So inside of this use effect, what I want to do is I want to call fetch cat. So let's go here. Let's fetch our cat and this should fetch our cat based on the ID that we have in our param. Awesome. So once we have our cat, what we can very simply do is render that cat information inside of here. So what we can say here is something like um, if the cat data is not null. So if the cat data is null, so if we actually have cat data, so we can do that by saying cat and, and then we can actually render the element. So if we have the cat data and it's not null, we want to render the elements. So we're going to say div here. And this div, let's give it a class name of container and MT5. And let's also give it a, I wonder if you can just say flex here instead of giving it inline styles, a flex here. Then we're also going to give it an image. And then the image is going to have a source of cat.image.url. And then here we're going to say cat dot image dot uh, alt. All right. And then that's the image. And then let's just display some of the information. So we're going to say div. We're going to say class name. We're going to give this a margin left and right. So margin X of five. And then we're going to say H1. Over here, we're going to display the cat dot name. And then over here, we're going to display in a paragraph, the cat dot description. All right. So now if we were to save this, and now if you were to go here, you can see that we get this and this, this display flex actually didn't work. So let's just make it inline style. I'm not sure what the bootstrap styles is for this. So you can say display flex. All right, awesome. So if we were to ref if we were to go, let's go back to cats. And if we were to click on say Hector, you can see that we get Hector. And also let's add the nav bar right here. Now you can notice that the nav bar, we're adding it like multiple times in our application. Uh, so let's go here nav bar. So we can actually fix that. So let's say, what is it called? Is it called nav or nav bar? Nav. So over here, we can have our nav bar. We can actually navigate throughout our app. So this is pretty much our application. We learned quite a bit. We learned about the server side of Next. We learned about how we can navigate through different pages. Uh, but there is one little thing that I want to talk about. So right now, what we're doing is we're rendering the nav bar inside of every single component, every single page that uh, we have created. Is there a better way to do this? For example, actually, what if we had a nav bar and we also had a footer and we also had something else that we displayed on every single page? Now we're gonna have to hard code every single thing inside of our uh, uh, page. Every single time, we're gonna have to duplicate it. And anytime we wanna make a change, we have to move from one area to the next. That's not great. So we're gonna actually fix this with layouts. In this section, we're going to learn about layouts and what layouts do is solve the problem where we have multiple components within multiple pages inside of our application. So instead of what we're doing here, just simply hard coding it, what we can do is we can create a layout and give a particular page that layout. Now, with one component, it seems like a lot of extra work, but if we have multiple components that are shared across multiple pages, layouts are really, really helpful. So in order to create a layout, what we can very simply do is let's close all these off in here. Let's create a layouts directory. 
And then in here, what I want to do is I want to create a default layout. So I'm going to create a default.js file. And this is going to be a very simple component, just a very simple function based component. And I'm going to call this default layout. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the children and the children are going to be the children components that we're going to pass in. And then very simply right over here, what we can do is render the nav element, which is the element that we want on every single page. And then we can have a main tag I and mean, this can be whatever it is that we want. And then in here we can have our children. And so what's going to happen here is we're going to have our nav. There we're going to have all of the other components that are inside of the page itself. And then we can also, if we want, we can add a footer here and then uh, we can add whatever it is that we want. But what's nice about this, if we use this layout, if we go to whatever uh, a page, for example, this one, we don't actually have to render the nav component. So let's actually just go ahead and do this. So let's save this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to any specific page that has that we want to have this layout in our case, every single page we want to have this layout. So we're going to go here page, we're going to go to cats. And let's go actually let's go over here to the index first. So this one right over here, we're going to get rid of this nav. So we're going to get rid of this nav right over here. And once we get rid of this nav, we're also going to import the default layout. So we're going to say default layout should auto import. I guess it didn't. Let's go over here and auto import it. So import default layout from over here. So I guess it did auto import. Awesome. And now what we're going to do is very simply just wrap our component with the default layout. So let's just get rid of this main tag. And then in here, we're going to have our default layout. We're going to have our default layout. And you can see here that, um, let's close this off right here. You can see here that we have our default layout. And then over here, we have this head component. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. Don't worry. But now we have this. Let's close this off as well here and let's save that. And now if you were to go to our home page, you can see that we have this. Awesome. So we still have our nav. So we're going to do the exact same thing for all the other components. So let's go over to here and let's get the default layout. So we're going to import default layout from default layouts. And we are just going to wrap this part of the app. So we're going to say here default layout. We're going to wrap this part of the app with the default layout. Let's go here. Awesome. And so now in the cats, we also have our nav. And then lastly, inside of the ID, uh, which is the dynamic page, let's add the default layout here. Let's see if we can auto import it this time. Default layout. We can. Awesome. Uh, let's close this off. And so right in here, what we can very simply do is add this default layout. Cool. Awesome. And now if you go to a particular cat, we should also have our nav. The last part of the application, I want to talk about that head component that we saw right over here. So inside of our index.js file, we have this head component. And this is actually really great for adding the metadata for our application. So over here for each particular page, what we can do is we can supply it with the title of the page, some metadata as well as some links. So we can actually have a different fav icon for different pages. We can also have a different title for different pages and we can also have different, you know, metadata descriptions. So if I were to go to the root page, if you can see here, I'm not going to be able to zoom in, but you can see that the title of this is create next app. Now for this page, I can call this, I don't know, cat's world or something. Maybe that's what our app is called. And now you can see here that now it's called cat's world. We can also have a different fav icon. So we can have a different inside of our public directory. As you can see here, we have this fav icon. We can redirect it to different fav icons if we want to, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, and of course we can have different descriptions. 
So what we can actually do is for each particular um, page that we have here. So for example, the cats page, what we can say here is also add a head element and we have to auto import that in. Uh, we get that from uh, next slash head. And over here, what we can say is our cats if we want to. And of course we can actually change the description and the content itself. So now if we were to go here, this changes to our cats. How cool is that? Now this can also be dynamic. So if we were to click on this, we can actually render a dynamic uh, head element. So let's go here, let's copy that in. And let's go to this page and let's paste this in. Let's auto import this from next uh, slash head. Let's get rid of this nav. And then in here, what we can do, where is the component in here? What we can do is we can just very simply call this. We can very simply call this cat dot name. So we can get the cat name. And if we were to render this, and the reason why this is failing is because uh, we're still loading. So we can actually just put this in here. So let's put this right in here. So let's add some fragments. So let's add some fragments, let's paste that in there. And now if I were to go to Sydney, you can see here that we have Sydney. How awesome is that? And of course, again, we can change the metadata as well as the links. So that pretty much wraps up the next JS course. I hope you guys learned a lot and I'll see you guys in the next one.